Hello, and uh, welcome to our Symmetrics Advanced Training for W Series Remotes webinar. My name is Tony Cochran. I'm a technical sales engineer at Symmetrics, and today I will be going over the four new IP based wall controllers that represent a major change to our configurable remote systems. We are introducing a new class of units that will replace or in some cases augment our RS-485 based ARC hardware interfaces. These new W series remotes are found in the toolkit the same way any other unit like our DSPs or expansions or other IP based controls like the PD-1, Telco dialer and T5R. The way to place a W series remote control is to double click on the W remote control in the toolkit from the four new choices available, or sim simply drag and drop into the site view. When you place the unit, you notice it has an icon that looks like the W series remote control you're going to work with. So it's easy to keep track of in the site file. The right click menu on the icon contains, among other items, open, unit properties, design notes, flash LEDs, locate hardware, and enable disable unit. Just like other units, before a valid IP address is assigned, you can double click on the unit to open the unit properties dialog. And after an IP address has been assigned, double, -click, uh, double clicking opens the unit's diagnostic module, which looks like this. It's also what we call the simulator. Notice that uh, when you right click, the unit properties is bolded when the IP is not assigned. And this changes when the IP is assigned so that the open is bolded and that becomes the default double click action. Now the units may be located in Composer like any DSP unit to assign an IP address. Just click once on the locate box and come up. The unit properties for the W series remotes are almost exactly like our DSP unit properties dialogs, but it doesn't include anything specific to DSPs like external control inputs or IO cards. It does include a button called edit remote settings to allow editing of each specific type of the W series remote. Some of these settings may be edited from the design view properties window for a selected unit once placed, but that's a little further into the presentation. Now the main setting that a W1 can be programmed for is the action of the encoder button. There are two basic modes, depending on if the user is trying to allow the W1 to support a single encoder menu and a single button menu, or multiple virtual encoder menus. That's what we call select and set. So the first thing is to know how you want to use the W1 and set the encoder button mode in the edit W1 settings dialog. The default is encoder button menu, so we'll start with that. For the encoder button menu operation, once it's pushed, there is a timeout for the unit to return to the encoder menu operation, that's the twist operation. The default in the dropdown comes up at five seconds, but you can choose one, two, three, up to 30 seconds. To start the programming, I'm going to open the simulator. For the W series remote control, we call the W1, and I'm going to enter the design view by double clicking on the DSP. To assign a module using the encoder and encoder button menu mode, just double click on the module you want to assign remote control to. Right click on the parameter and choose setup to remote control. I'm gonna choose this mute button, go to setup to remote control. Now in the setup to remote control dialog, you will see all the W series remote control units which have been placed in the site view and can be configured. Certain units that can't be configured for a type of control just won't show up in this dialog. We may see that later when we have all the W series remotes in the site view. Now the 
drop down available in select wall panel controller are specific to the W series remote control highlighted and the chosen mode. In this case, we can assign the mute button to be triggered from either the push action of the encoder button menu or the twist action of the encoder menu. So first I'm just gonna use the encoder button menu. I'm gonna assign the mute button to the encoder button menu here. And you can test that by pushing the button on the W1, or in this case, clicking the button in the simulator. And I'm going to assign the fader to the encoder menu, set up to remote control. And notice it's the only one available for the fader. And then we will see that update to the display. And again, the timeout, if I use the button, there's five seconds and it comes back. So if I'm programming a W series remote, my next move might be to start looking at the W1 remote menu properties um, at this point, but I wanna save that for later. Instead, let's try setting up the W1 for the select and set. So let's clear the remote settings. And I'll clear my menus in remote unit. We'll get this back to state as if it were brand new and unassigned. This time, I'm going to right click on the W1. I'm going to choose unit properties. And then from unit properties, choose edit remote settings, this dialog. I'm going to choose encoder menu select instead of the default encoder button menu. I'm going to leave the require confirmation unchecked in this demonstration, but please notice that the timeout option is available for encoder button menu only, and the require confirmation is available for encoder menu select only. When I click OK, notice now the button, uh, notice the menu says unassigned one. So this is the default menu that will show on wake, but it can be specified to be any of the up to eight menus to a, a show on wake, it could be unassigned, or it could be the second menu that comes on wake, that comes up on wake. So to program the select and set, I'll make sure I'm in the design view, and I'll double click on the module to make the assignments. It doesn't have to be just one module, but for the purposes of this demonstration, I'm gonna use this eight channel gain. Right click on each of the faders and use setup to remote control. Notice the select wall panel controller dropdown has the eight assignments to choose from. Okay, I'm gonna finish setting these up real quick here. Just hitting enter really quickly to get past that. Okay, now notice I can step through Um, the, uh, by pushing the encoder button and it cycles through the assignments and allows the control of the eight faders. Okay, now I'm gonna jump into the W2. We're gonna look at the W2 programming. In the toolkit, I'm gonna drag a W2 in the site view. Now the W2 is the simplest of the W series remotes. It does not have a special mode option to change like the rest of the W series remotes. We may look at the W2 remote unit properties later when we're looking at display styles, but to program for right now, I'm just gonna go back into the design view. Again, these button assignments don't have to be from one single module, but for the demonstration purposes, I'm setting it up uh, for this four channel mixer by itself. I right click on these mute buttons and use setup to remote control. Notice that the W1 does not show, like I was talking about earlier, it does not show in the setup to remote control window. That's because it doesn't have relevant controls that can be used in this case. And notice the select wall panel controller. We actually have a choice to assign to button menu, but also radio button menu. So I'll do the radio button after I do the button menu. So we'll just do this really quickly with the simulator come up. You can actually have that where it doesn't come up automatically. But to show you how easy it is to set this up, 
set up these four mutes and we have mute one, two, three, and four. And those are set up. Okay. I'm gonna go ahead and clear out the assignments. I'm gonna right click, go to unit properties, clear menus, again, resetting my W1 so it's all completely in assign. And I'll use this W2. Uh, for the W2, I'll use this radio button module. So this time I'm going to assign it just to the slider. Set up to remote control. Uh, make sure I'm on a W2. And I've got my radio button menu that shows up. Just the one slider assigns to all the buttons and my radio buttons are all assigned. Notice the LEDs uh, show up by default in this display. Very quickly, I'll just show you with the LED that can actually be set to false to get rid of it, but we'll go more into properties a little bit later. Okay, I'm gonna move into the W3 programming. Let's move right along. Try again a W3. Okay, notice these all look like their respective controllers. Okay, now the W3 is basically a combination of the W1 and the W2. But for the main programming of the encoder, there is a new option to the programming. In addition to the encoder being able to be used as the one-time button, one-time knob, or the select and set from the encoder for the eight parameters, you can also set the W3 to select and set from the four buttons available on the face of the unit. Now, you've already seen how to assign the encoder for the encoder button menu and the encoder menu select. So I'm going to show you on this W3, the new menu setting encoder button menu select and set version. So I need to set the W3 for this mode. I'm going to go to the W3 unit properties and then edit remote settings. And I will leave the encoder button mode as encoder button menu, but I'll change to this new option available, select and set using individual buttons. Now again, these can be from different modules, but for the purposes of the demonstration, I'm going to go into design view and use this four channel gain. I'm going to right click on the first fader, go to set up to remote control. I should choose my W3 and I look in my select wall panel controller. Notice the select and set option shows the four buttons available on the face of the W3. Go ahead and assign these. And the last one. And now notice where we see the new operation where the button triggers the control of the fader. Uh, now I'm just gonna go ahead and remove this programming just so I can show you how to quickly set this up as a combination W1, W2. Right click, clear menus. Okay, this is unassigned again. This time I'm gonna set up my mutes on the W3. See my choices here, I'm gonna go for button menu. Ah, one thing that I did need to do actually was to go into the unit properties and go to edit remote settings. And I need to change this to encoder menu select. I forgot to do that, but that can be fixed right in the middle. So let's go fix that. There we go, U one, two, three, four. 
And now I'm going to go ahead and set these faders up. I have my encoder menu set for select and set. And the last one. Okay, so now I have my combination W2 with the mutes. Oh, I've signed those same one. Uh, and the gain for select and set, the different gains. Okay, so for the W4, this is basically a cap the capability of the W3, but with the four added buttons. You can set up the button select so that eight buttons control the action of the encoder. I drag a W4, that is not a W4. Let's try that again. So that's what why the icons help. <laughs> so the eight buttons help, and it shows, uh, you can set it up with the uh, eight buttons uh, for that control over the encoder, and you can also have the encoder do eight parameters, so you can have 16 parameters. Uh, also note the uh, W2, W3, W4 series remotes. You can mix and match some of the control types. Like you could have a radio button for one and two, and then a momentary button for three, and a preset for four. So they're very configurable. Now I'd like to talk about the properties now. And so to show some examples, um, just to, for the displays and how to set up the display. So I'm gonna move back to W1, show you some of the display configuration, since it's got the simplest display. Well, there are many ways to configure the display shown. I can change the display to show text, symbols, or turn it off. I can swap the parameter name and the parameter value, and I can enable various components of any given display to show or not show. For example, the default display for this game, we can find what the default is in the unit properties, edit remote settings, and in the area down below, we have uh, which is also available, by the way, you can get to this menu from setup to remote control edit unit, but it's just, you get to the same place either way from the uh, simulator, it's edit W1 settings. When you're looking at the display defaults in the edit dialog, and here they are in the lower part of the dialog, um, you should know that these are just defaults for when you first assign a parameter. They can be changed at any time by going to the properties panel to adjust them. So let's try swapping the menu name and the menu value. So I can just go to horizontal alignment, I can move that to the right, and the uh, horizontal value, move that to the left, and now I've swapped that. And I can change my display, I can maybe make that say volume, or maybe I don't want text, maybe I wanna change the display type from text to symbol. This is where I pull up my symbol, go to webdings, and pull up musical. <laughs> Maybe that's a little too far to the right, so now I can use my offset. I'm gonna make that negative 25, move that a little bit more. Um, and maybe if my audience is a little bit less technical and I wanna change the DB, I can change the readout to be a percent. And maybe I wanna change my bar graph to make it a little more interesting as a moving bar. So now I can change that to be a completely different look. That was just a little fun to show some of the capability. Now let's get into the properties in a little bit more depth. I'm not gonna go over each property, but hit some of the highlights on the, at least the W1 properties. Notice that these properties can be unique for each W series remote. So when we look at the pane of the W1, we'll see a lot of configurable properties are available. These include the brightness setting, this can be from one to eight, and you can notice that in the simulator immediately and also on the W1. The wake security setting, if this is going to determine if the unit will go to sleep after a time. If wake security is set to true, then a wake security pin menu activates. Idle mode, which is collapsed normally, we can open that up. Now the idle mode brightness can be set from one to five 
and it acts in conjunction with the overall brightness setting, allowing up to 40 different combinations of brightness when in idle mode. The idle delay is the number of seconds of an activity before entering idle mode. The display type, again, this is the type of display to, to show. Anytime you see display type anywhere, it could be in idle mode, it could be somewhere else in the encoder menu. Anytime you see this, it's always going to show text or symbol or off. Also with some of these other settings, horizontal alignment, if you see this alignment, this is always going to be left, center, or right. Vertical alignment, top, center, or bottom. And then the offsets, the left, right incremental change you can make. They, you can be a negative or a positive number, depending on if you want to move left or right. And the vertical offset is negative or positive number up or down. So the sleep enable, and if sleep mode is enabled, the screens are going to go dark in sleep mode, and then the previously set up wake properties apply. If we set this to true, we see another menu activate, set it to true. Another menu activates the sleep delay, that's how many seconds of inactivity after entering idle mode, but before entering sleep mode. Now the encoder button mode on the W1, W3, W4 units determine if the encoder button operates as a separate button menu or uh, as the encoder uh, select. So this is where I said you could change this later after as well. Um, certain extra properties for each mode show based on what mode you have set here. So under separate button menu, Again, we get the button operation timeout. Under encoder menu select, we get the confirm change with click, just like we had those choices. Uh, the last property I'm gonna call out, again, I showed before is the bar graph. This allows you to move, uh, you can make the bar graph go away, disable it there, moving bar, bar up, bar down, bar up's moving from left to right, bar down's moving from right to left. And again, these properties, are totally customized to the W series remote you're working with. So for example, if you're working with the W2, um, you, you may notice that when you open up the simulator here and click on a button, that the properties open and collapse based on the button that you click on in the simulator to help you find them in the properties. And I'm gonna go ahead and open the floor up for any questions you may have sent in. And if there are no questions, again, my name is Tony Cochran, and I want to thank you for attending this webinar on our new W-Series remotes.